Hi there. So a lot of people ask me uh, how I deal with phosphates in my system. It's a really common question. You know, I've got a big system, uh, a lot of fish that I feed an awful lot. And to be quite honest, phosphates are a constant struggle for me. So I um, figured I'd take a little bit of time here and explain how I deal with phosphates. Um, we're going to cover this a little bit more in depth in an upcoming episode of LA Fish Guys Tech Talk. So if you uh, subscribe to the LA Fish Guys channel, um, you will see an upcoming episode where I'll we'll talk about other treatments for phosphate as well. Um, if you don't subscribe, you might want to check out LA Fish Guys uh, on YouTube. Uh, it's a great channel. Anyhow, uh, so we're going to talk about how I deal with phosphates. Now, there, I do have GFO in my tank, and I'll be the first to admit that I'm really lazy when it comes to dealing with GFO. Um, it's just something that I, I'm really not good at. And frankly, as much as I feed this tank, I go broke using GFO all the time. Even though I use it, I go broke maintaining it. Um, and changing it out every couple of weeks like I probably need to. So I take a little bit more um, extreme uh, approach to my phosphates. Uh, first off, you know, I don't deal with it that often. Uh, my phosphates get pretty high. I mean, it's not uncommon for me to see phosphates as high as 0.2 ppm, uh, which by most people would consider that high. Frankly, it's not that much of an issue for me because I have two refugiums in my system um, and they do a good job consuming it and out competing algae growth. So I don't have nuisance algae issues in the main display, so that does work for me. But I also use my refugiums as a gauge as to when my phosphates are getting elevated. I can see it based on the nuisance algae that grows in them when it's time to change my, uh, or, or time to address my phosphates. So anyhow, um, it is a constant struggle for me. Every about three to four months, I'll um, deal with my phosphates. And the way I deal with it is using lanthanum chloride. Now, I do not recommend lanthanum chloride to most people. Um, it's not something that is really safe for your tank unless you know what you're doing. If you want to find out more about lanthanum chloride, I would suggest going to Reef Central and doing a search for lanthanum chloride. That's spelled L-A-N-T-H-A-N-U-M. Lanthanum, L-A-N-T-H-A-N-U-M chloride. Uh, I can double check that. Anyhow, uh, also known as L-A-C-L for short. Uh, so you can search on Reef Central. There's a great thread that has a lot of information on it. Now, what I use is a product called C-Clear Phosphate Remover. This is commercial stuff used for pools. Um, there's a couple versions of the phosphate um, remover by C-Clear, one of which is called C-Clear CR. I don't know much about it. Every liquid phosphate remover uses lanthanum chloride, and each phosphate remover has a different concentration of lanthanum chloride. So, you know, what works for me using this blend uh, maybe a completely different ratio with the next blend. So again, we're going to stick with what I use and how I deal with it. And again, this is C-Clear Phosphate Remover. It's available on Amazon. It's available from various pool supply places. But it has the same active ingredient that pretty much all liquid phosphate removers have, which is lanthanum chloride. Uh, you'll also notice that I have my phosphate checker here. This is a HANA ULR, that is Ultra Low Resolution Phosphorus Checker. Um, hopefully that's coming out okay and isn't blurry. Um, again, this is the HANA ULR Phosphorus Checker, model HI736. Uh, phosphorus, you're probably wondering why phosphorus. Uh, you'll notice on this, or you may not be able to tell, but it says marine on there. This is the only checker that HANA certifies for marine use. There's a HANA HI713 Phosphate Checker, which is really popular, but it is not accurate for our use. It is not designed for ultra-low resolution levels that we target in salt water. So if you have that HI713, um, you might want to get rid of it and invest in the HI736 because it's a lot more accurate, especially at low levels. Uh, so I use a HANA HI736 phosphorus checker. Um, you'll also notice that I have my alkalinity test kit here. This is a Salifert one. I use both Salifert and Red Sea Pro. Uh, think about phosphates. If you remove them rapidly, they can impact alkalinity. And uh, what they'll do is they'll drop your alkalinity, which is why it's important to test both before and after. And if for some reason my alkalinity were to drop too much over the course of a treatment, um, I would simply dose some, uh, in my case, soda ash to raise my alkalinity up. Uh, you'll notice over here I got an IV bag, and this is really important in the way I treat because I do it really, really slowly. What you don't see is in the sump, um, which is a 10 micron filter saw. And again, very important because what happens is when you drip this stuff into the water, the lanthanum chloride immediately reacts with the uh, phosphates in the water and they precipitate, you know, basically they, they become solid particles in the water and you need something to capture them, which is why I drip directly into a 10 micron sock. With water flowing into the sock through my sock tray, 
Uh, I drip directly into it and it captures any precipitate that's in there. My protein skimmer is also nearby. Uh, and while I'm doing this, you know, I'm constantly monitoring the water for any cloudiness because what that means is precipitate is escaping and that cloudiness in the water can kill your fish. It attaches to their gills and it can literally kill them. And what's interesting is there's a lot of um, phosphate removers, liquid phosphate removers on the market that you know are packaged for our use in aquariums. What they don't tell you on the instructions is to use the filter stuff. Why they don't, I don't really know. Maybe it's because the concentrations in their product are so low that you know somebody thinks that it really doesn't matter or they don't want to inconvenience users. I don't know, but I would never dose a liquid phosphate remover into my water without capturing the precipitate. That is really critical. Uh, now, on to how I use it. Now remember, I have a 700 gallon system, and again, I do not condone anybody use this method unless you do your own homework. That is critical because, like I said, this stuff can be dangerous. Not only can it kill your fish, but it can drop your alkalinity rapidly, which can impact your corals. So, back to my solution. You'll see I also have a nice little syringe here. For me, five milliliters of the Seaclear product, five milliliters of the Seaclear product diluted in one liter of our ODI water will reduce my phosphates by 0.05 ppm. Again, that's 0.05 ppm in a 700 gallon system. Now, I don't recommend dropping it any more than 0.04 to 0.05 at a time. Uh, if you have invertebrates like sea anemones, they don't like sudden changes in phosphates. Uh, I've gone as much as 0.06 at a time, and it's actually pissed off my anemone, and he ended up kind of extending onto the other side of the tank, and I had to take a power head over there to blast him back to this side of the tank um, and, and get him back into position. So I've learned that you know we don't want to do too much at one time. Also, because of the possibility of dropping alkalinity too much, which is just, you know great for corals, I tend to be very careful. Uh, the other thing, you know, again, you probably notice this IV bag, and the reason I use that is because I do it very slowly. Uh, I'm going to come over here to the camera, but you'll see down below there is a little see that there. little drip counter, wherever the hell it is, right over here, see that? We're dripping at one bubble, or one drop per second. Um, again, one drop per second, and the reason being is that we really, really want to go slow. Now, I'm going to pop this off the tripod, so the camera wiggles around a lot. I don't have the steadiest hand, but, you know, I go at a rate. one drop per second. You probably see that there. The idea is that we're going to do this really slowly and that one liter um, mixture up there, one liter of RODI and five milliliters of lanthanum chloride will take me approximately seven hours to dose. It's a very slow process. I don't want to drop my phosphates fast. I don't want to drop my alkalinity fast. Um, well, frankly, I don't want to drop my alkalinity at all, but it's just something that happens and my alkalinity might come down you know, point two dKH or something like that. It's not really very much. Um, and you'll see right there is my 10 micron sock, a lot of water flow going through it. Um, you can use a 5 micron sock. Hey, that's even better, but I use 10 micron socks. I keep a constant eye on my filter sock to make sure it's not overflowing because if it does overflow, the uh, lanthanum chloride, or the precipitate more importantly, will escape. There's my other filter sock there. Got it out of the way so I can put the 10 micron in. But the lanthanum chloride, um, it causes the precipitate. You know, the precipitate will back up the filter sock. So you got to keep an eye on that. And of course, I've always got extra filter socks ready to go. Um, and again, this will take me approximately seven hours to do this complete dose. I don't leave my house during that dosing. I stay home, keep an eye on it. I test my alkalinity before and after. And because I'm dropping my phosphates, you know, from a fairly high level, it's going to take me a few doses. I'm going to space my doses out, or I space my doses out, uh, usually about three days apart. Um, so I'll dose today, and three days from now I'll dose again. We'll bring them down from 0.2 to 0.15 today. A few days I'll bring them down from 0.15 to 0.10, and then I'll do one more successive dose to bring them down to 0.05 which is ultimately my target.
So again, today we were at 0 0.20 when we started this. Um, when I'm done, I should be at about 0.15. A couple days from now, we'll dose again. We'll get it down to 0 0.10, and then we'll dose one more time a few days after that, um, which will probably be Sunday, to get it down to 0 0.05, which is typically where I target. And you know, I'm not very meticulous about where it is. It could be 0 0.05 for all I care. It could be. 0.10 it's really not going to make much of a difference 0.07 but I usually target 0.07 to 0.05 ppm a little bit of phosphates is normal and a little bit of phosphates is good um, you see my other videos so my corals don't seem to mind high phosphates a lot of people make a big issue out of it and in a lot of systems the phosphates can be a pain in the ass because they do um, you know they, they do facilitate nuisance algae growth um, as I said I have two refugiums so it's not that big of a deal for me but your results may vary with phosphate. So anyhow, there you have it. That's how I deal with it. Sea clear lanthanum chloride, which is this stuff here. Of course, I use my HANA phosphate checker. I have my alkalinity test. I test my alkalinity before and after the dose, and I'll test the following day as well. Um, if for some reason my alkalinity dropped more than I expect, granted, I know what to expect. Um, I will add a little bit of soda ash and RODI water and drip that into the system over the course of a couple hours to get my alkalinity back up. Um, it's usually not an issue because I don't see a big alkalinity swing. Of course, I've got my IV bag. This IV bag is a kangaroo bag. You can get them on Amazon. Just look for um, kangaroo feeding bag. It's got a nice little cap that you can pop off to add your solution into. Um, it includes a little drip thing, a little restrictor so you can adjust the flow going through the IV bag. Um, 10 micron socks, you can Google them, but I use 10 micron belt socks. It's a very important to use a belt sock, not a mesh sock, because mesh socks don't work anywhere near as good as a belt sock. So, anyhow, uh, that is short of it. That's how I do it. Hope you learned something. Again, Reef Central, search for lanthanum chloride, search by title there, um, and uh, you know, you'll find lots of good information. It's a very long thread, but I really encourage you, if you're considering this method, please read the entire thread. You know, you can ask me questions, but the reality of it is, is that you really need to do your homework on this stuff because, again, it can be dangerous if you don't use it right. Um, otherwise, stick to GFO, stick to Rolofos. For most systems, um, that stuff is great. It'll work well. It isn't going to break your bank like it would if you had a 700-gallon system like mine. Um, and uh, that's about it. And also, again, check out LA Fish Guys on YouTube. Um, good channel. It's a good friend of mine, Jim. You've probably seen me in some of his videos. If you follow that stuff, uh, we will be doing a Tech Talk episode on this to cover what I didn't cover. Um, so there you have it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Catch you later. Stay tuned.